So guys, I'm just going to do a summary of the lesson we did on reading ECGs. The first thing I want to tell you, this approach is something that I developed, something I have been using for a while. Uh, and it's basically a discipline so that I don't miss anything. Okay, I have three rules. The first is the rate. I always check the rate. Just remember these three rules, rate, rhythm and shape. Okay, first, the rate you check the rhythm strip to see if it is beating faster than normal or if it is beating slower than normal i'll teach you how to do those i just want to go through an overview next we have the rhythm the one thing you need to check there is you check if it's a sinus rhythm or not what does that mean is the p wave present or not okay and finally the shape what that means is i follow the pqrst wave i follow the wave to see if there's any abnormality okay we will come back to this image uh, first i need to tell you this is going to be a summary the actual class was done some time ago this will be a summary on how to read ecgs and the first thing you need to know is how to identify a normal ecg this is something most people don't know to do and what happens then they overanalyze okay they overanalyze ecgs and they will try to find something wrong somewhere okay so how do you know if it's a normal ecg first the rate rate look at this i will teach you this around one two three four four big boxes and that corresponds to a rate the way i remember it is if it is just one box gap the rate is 300 if it is two boxes the rate is 150 three boxes rate is let me write the boxes one two three the rate is 100 when it's three boxes 75 when it's four boxes 60 when it's five boxes and below uh, beyond that it's going to be bradycardia okay so this range is a normal heart rate okay so in this there's four boxes there's roughly four boxes between the p q p q r s t this is the normal wave between the two r waves you have four boxes that gives us a rate of around 75 okay that's normal next rhythm you check to see if there is a sinus wave what does that mean you check to see if there is a p wave okay and finally the shape so you follow the wave p q r s t you can see p q r s t you can see that it's all there all three rules satisfy a normal ecg okay so this is the summary of all that an inverted t wave in lead vr is normal okay and a normal p to r what is p to r p q r s t p to r interval is about three to five small squares why is this important because this gap is going to tell us a lot of things it will tell us a condition called a hard block okay and the qrs complex is usually around three small squares okay Next, I will tell you about the lead placement so that you know how to uh, locate which area of the heart is affected. Okay. If there is a defect in the leads 2, 3, ABF, that means the problem is in the inferior leads. In the inferior region of the heart, you have the problem. If it is a problem in 1, AVL, V5, and V6, it's a lateral lead problem. Okay. I will explain this a bit more before that v1 v2 are anterior leads okay you can see i have placed them anteriorly over here you can pause the video and draw this diagram finally v3 and v4 are septal the way you remember these is like this 2 3 avf you need to know is for the uh, inferior section of the heart We'll take the precordial, that means the 
uh, lens related to the heart, the precordial lens. So the way you keep it is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Okay. So you can see V1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So what does V1 and V2 tell you about? The right side of the heart. Okay. Remember that V3, V4, the septum and V5, V6 tells you about the left side of the heart. Okay. Basic anatomy just related to that. This image, I will come back to that next. So these gaps are for the parts that Prashant did in his lectures. You can fill that in. Sinus bradycardia. What does brady mean? You will hear this word in a lot of places, mostly related to the heart. But even for diseases such as um, malaria, you get bradyzoids. It basically means slow. So bradyzoids are slow dividing uh, malaria parasites. In this, it means slow heart rate. Okay. Why do you add the word sinus here? This means it is uh, the P wave is going to be present. Okay. Now, let me take the box, uh, the uh, measurement. We need to check the R to R wave. Okay. You can count the boxes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as I told you before, uh, six, seven, seven will be somewhere here. It is definitely bradycardia. So the first rule is rate. We are learning to read the rate now. First rate. We see, we look at the rhythm strip actually. This is the easiest strip to read. The R to R gap is seven boxes. And that gives a heart rate less than 60. That is a bradycardia. You get it in these conditions, athletes, hypothyroidism, hypothermia, obstructive jaundice, and under stimulation of the sinoatrial node. Okay. Next, you have sinus tachycardia. And what's important here is, again, it's sinus wave. You get a P wave. Sometimes it is found hidden inside the uh, next T wave. Okay, that gives you a camel hump appearance. Okay, what you need to check for here is the gap. Always use lead to, because that is the rhythm strip. It's a long strip, you can see it's long. So you can uh, actually judge the rhythm to see if there's any alterations in the rhythm. Does it suddenly become slow or fast? So you can see the gap is two boxes. So the rate is going to be 150 beats per minute. Okay, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. Just remember it like that. Uh, and remember, don't go to read, uh, count the small boxes, multiply it by uh, things and try to find the exact rate. That's useless. Because in an ECG, they will tell you that rate. But you don't need to look at all those. You just need to know by the big boxes what the rate is, okay? And uh, I need to tell you that these links I have given below, you can follow those to learn more about each ECG. That I gave credits for the ECGs that I took from these people, okay? So this is a sinus tachycardia. Next, we have a condition. This is one long ECG. It goes this way, this way. It's one long ECG. You will see this tachycardia, two boxes, and this bradycardia. See, look at this gap. So this is gradually becoming fast as you go this way, and you have tachycardia. So this is called sinus tachybrady syndrome. Another word is sick sinus syndrome. Okay, and this is not related to inspiration or expiration. Just remember that fact. Okay. Next, we have paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. This is the same as sinus ventricular tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia. Uh, this is a condition in which the heart suddenly increases for about three to five beats. 
around three beats, you get a sudden heart rate. So uh, usually this happens after you hear exciting news or after drinking coffee. And these patients have sudden onset palpitations, dizziness and syncope. Okay.